Hey, good morning to all of our options traders out there, and I hope everybody had a fabulous weekend. And last week, I did post a video talking about a review of the Greeks, a little overview of the five key Greeks. But I had somebody email that said, I don't quite really understand what's causing Delta. I don't really understand why it changes with time and volatility. And that's really a good question because understanding the definitions is never enough. It might get you started, but it's not going to help you navigate through strategies or as the stock price, time, and volatility change. So a better way to understand Delta is to visualize it. And if you have a good visual of what's creating it and what's causing it to change, you'll be able to envision it and not have to think about definitions. And we're going to look at Delta Visualized. And as always, before we do, please be sure to click like and subscribe. It's always appreciated and helps to promote the channel. So visualizing Delta, there are really three key questions that we want to answer in this video. The first one is, how does Delta change as the stock price changes, whether it's going up or down? What's going to happen to those Deltas? What about time? As time changes, how is that going to affect your Delta? And then finally, what about volatility? If volatility increases, what's going to happen to those in the money options or those out of the monies? Or as volatility decreases, there's a lot of different combinations and scenarios we could consider. And a lot of traders try to memorize all of these different conditions. It's really difficult. And you're most likely going to get some things reversed. Better way is to visualize it. So how can we visualize Delta to easily answer all of these questions? So let's start with the basic definition of delta, and it's usually easiest to start with shares of stock. So we're looking at a risk graph here for one share of stock purchased at 100. And remember that we have stock prices across the horizontal. We have the resulting profits or losses on the vertical. So what we're trying to do is to assign a number to the slope of this line or the pitch of this line. So as I often tell traders, think of it like the side view of a mountain that you're snow skiing. This is a pretty steep angle, but what if it were like this or even more so? That would have greater slope. Or if it was flat this way, we would say it has no slope. And so we're just trying to figure out, is there a way to put a number to this? Well, there is, and you might remember from early school days that we can describe the slope of a line by what's called rise over run. So think of it this way. If you were to run $1 along the horizontal here, $1 wide from 100 to 101, how far would you have to rise to come up and meet this line? Well, it looks like that's also $1. You can see right there where it touches is $1. So the rise divided by the run is $1 divided by $1, which is a delta of 1. That's what delta one means. It means that for every dollar the stock rises, you will make a dollar profit. Now, what about if the stock falls? This is where a lot of traders think, well, that must be negative delta. Not quite. And here's why. Let's say if the stock falls $1 out here from 100 to 99, let's call that a negative run minus $1. How far do we have to, in this case, drop down, let's say in the negative direction to touch that line? Well, that's also a dollar to the downside. Right there, we line up at minus one. So it's just telling us if you have shares of stock purchased for 100 and it falls $1, you're going to lose $1. So if we take the rise, which is a negative rise, divided by the run, which is also negative, remember that a negative divided by a negative is still positive. So we still have a positive one delta. And that is true for shares of stock. Stock always has one delta. And the reason for this one-to-one -one relationship is the symmetry in the graph. So think if you were to draw a vertical line right there through 100, you can see that the right half of the chart looks just like the left. They're on opposite sides, but it's like a mirror image of each other. It has symmetry. The upside is exactly the same, just in reverse, to the downside. But see, that's not true for options. So here we have a $100 call, purchased for 3 bucks. There's our maximum loss. 
the black line is the expiration graph, but the red line is the current curve. Maybe it has 30 days to expiration. But you can see whether you're looking at the red or black curves, they're not symmetrical like they are for shares of stock. And we can see that if we look from 100 to 110, the stock goes up 10 bucks. Looks like we would make $7 here at expiration. But if the stock falls $10 from 100 down to 90, we only lose three. See, if that were shares of stock, we would make 10 here to the upside and we would lose 10 here to the downside because shares of stock have a symmetrical risk graph, but options don't. Options, we get this asymmetry. So we're dealing with a curve here with the current curve. So how could we assign a number that tells us the delta? How can we give a number here that tells us by how much our option is going to rise if the stock price rises some amount, let's say $1? Well, we can't, at least not to the same degree that we can with shares of stock, because it's not symmetrical. So what we have to do is a little trick here. We have to look at a very small range of stock prices, maybe plus or minus five cents. So let's do that. Let's zoom in just to this little range. Now watch what happens to this red curve. We can definitely see some curvature here, but watch what happens when we zoom in. So we're gonna zoom that graph in and the red line is starting to get straighter. We can see some curvature, but not nearly as much. Let's zoom in some more. What happens? Red line gets a little straighter. Zoom in some more. As we keep getting closer and closer, this red line gets straighter. And of course, we're zooming in on very small ranges of stock prices. So again, let's say that we've zoomed in to maybe plus or minus five cents. We're between 99.95 and 100.05. So now that line is looking virtually straight. And now we can go back to rise over run. So look what happens now if the stock runs five cents in this direction. How far do we have to rise to meet this red line? Well, it looks like about two and a half cents. So we have to come up two and a half cents. What's the delta now? Rise divided by run. Two and a half over five is a delta of a half. So we would say that the delta is a half or 50, but only in this very small range. And of course, if we go to the downside, it's exactly the same. If we run minus five cents in this direction, how far do we have to fall, or let's call it a negative rise in this direction? Again, two and a half cents. So if we take the rise over the run, we get negative two and a half cents divided by negative five cents, still gives us a positive delta of a half. So the thing to see is that we can say that this is a delta of a half, but only for very small ranges not for all stock prices. So the first question we can now answer, how do stock prices change delta? Well, all you're doing is you're just moving to different locations on this curve. So we just saw how if we zoomed in really tight here, it looks like a straight line. But we can also see it's relatively flat in here compared to up here, and certainly not as flat as it is down here. So as the stock price moves, this circle moves. So if we were to zoom in here, do that same exercise, we would get something greater than delta of a half. Maybe not a lot, but it would certainly be different because we can see that we are moving up this curve. What if the stock moves up in this area? Well, we zoom in and now we can see that red line is getting steeper. Our deltas would increase, but only in this tight range. What if the stock is way up here getting close to maybe 108 or 109? Now look at that, that red line is running roughly parallel to the black. See, now our deltas are going to be close to one, but only in this little circle. What if we go to the downside? Let's start back here from the center, from at the money. If the stock falls, what's going to happen? Do you see how that red line is starting to flatten out? Well, if we were to zoom in here and figure out our delta, rise over run, it would be lower. It would be less than a half. If the stock falls way out to here, what's happening? Now we're really flat. We're going to be close to delta zero, but only in this range. So that's the first thing to understand is that as that stock price moves up or down, 
all you're doing is taking this little circle and sliding along that red line. And so you should be able to visualize that as the stock price falls, we're getting flatter, we're losing deltas. And as the stock price rises out in this direction, we are gaining deltas. And if you're somewhere around at the money, you should have a delta roughly of one half. So that's a good way to visualize how stock prices change your deltas and why. Okay, so let's now answer the second question. How does time change your delta? Why should your deltas change just because time is passing? Well, once you understand how to calculate delta, it should be easy to see what happens as time passes. So let's say that we are on the blue line up here, maybe with, let's say that this is now 30 days, and time has gone by, maybe 15 days later, we're on the red curve. So the curve starts moving lower towards the black line as expiration gets closer. So notice that for any stock price, let's say if the stock is down here, notice that the slope or the delta of the blue line is steeper than it is down here. So if we have the $100 call, which we know there's our bend, we can see that the angle that this arrow is pointing is starting to drop. We are starting to lose deltas if it's an out-of-the-money option. And then conversely, if you have an in-the-money option, let's say up here, the opposite is happening. You can see with, let's say, 30 days to expiration, we're on this kind of a slope. But if we drop down to the red, let's say after 15 days, we're down here. But we are gaining deltas over here for the in-the-monies. Now, the opposite will be true if we, let's say, look at longer dated options. Maybe this red curve is the current curve for a January 100 call, but you're also considering a March $100 call. Well, going to longer dated options has the effect of pushing this red curve out. It's going to move from the red to the blue. And what's going to happen now? Now your out-of-the-money options will pick up deltas. That's a good reason for going out in time if you're going to use out-of-the-money options. But if you have in-the-money options and go out in time, they are going to lose deltas. So again, once you understand the effect of, let's say, going from the blue to the red as time passes, it's easy to just flip it and go from the red to the blue if you look at longer dated options. We can easily see what's going to happen with our deltas. Now, sometimes traders have a hard time visualizing which arrow is getting steeper or shallower because these red and blue curves aren't all that different. And so to help to see that, it helps to exaggerate the curves in here. So let's say that this is our current curve, maybe with 30 days to expiration. We're just zoomed in pretty tight. And then as time passes, we move to here. I'm just making it a very exaggerated move so you can see what's happening with these deltas. So on the left-hand side of the graph, when we're dealing with out-of-the-money calls, you are going to have relatively high deltas, but watch what happens as you move through time. You can see how they're getting flatter. So out-of-the-money calls are going to lose deltas over time. What about on this end of the curve? Now we're going to get the opposite. Now, let's say with 30 days to expiration, we're on this kind of an angle. It's fairly high, it's just not as high. And as time passes, we're going to move from this line to this one. See, now it's fairly easy to see that it's getting steeper. So that's what you want to realize and to visualize because once you understand how option deltas change with the passage of time, you get a bonus because it's exactly the same thing for changes in volatility. So let's just go through a quick review of volatility. Let's say here's our risk graph, here's our $100 call, and this is with 30 days to expiration on the red line. If volatility increases, it's going to push this line out. It's going to move from the red line to the blue. And of course, if volatility shrinks, it's going to move from the blue to the red. So it's very easy to just change directions. Just remember that increasing volatility is going to push out. Why? Because this option, let's say, is worth this much profit on this date at this stock price, but it would be worth this much if volatility increased. 
See, that blue line is showing more extrinsic value compared to the red. That's why it sits higher. That's why more time is going to push you from the red to the blue, and more volatility is going to push you from the red to the blue. And then the reverse is true. Time passing is going to move you from the blue to the red, or volatility contracting is going to go from the blue to the red. So now, do the same thing. Pick a stock price. We have a certain volatility here. Let's say around 96 or so, we get that kind of a slope. But if volatility falls, what happens? Same idea as if time passes. We are going to get a little shallower. We're going to lose deltas. What about on this end of the curve? Well, same idea as we just saw with time passing. If volatility falls from blue to red, let's say from high to low, we're going to go from fairly low deltas to fairly high deltas. So volatility falling for an in-the-money option is going to increase your deltas. And then the reverse is true if you have an in-the-money option and volatility increases. Those deltas are going to get reduced. So I hope that helps you to have a kind of a quick survey of why options have different deltas over different stock prices, whereas stock doesn't, and how those deltas change as the stock price changes, as time changes, and as volatility changes. Again, there's a lot of different combinations you would have to memorize, but if you just understand what's going on with these curves, it's very easy to picture. And when you can come up with simpler explanations, you're going to make faster and better decisions, and that's going to mean better results. And so for anyone who'd like to learn more about the art and science of options trading, please check out the Alpha Trader course, Strategy Lab, and a candlesticks and technical analysis course. It's all at optionsatoz.com. Also, please join us on Options A to Z's Facebook trading group, and you can find a link in the description below.